You have to bear with me with this title of the message, oh. The Cuss Words of the Bible. You know, we would always joke about this, and I would always jot them down, and I knew, I was like, one day I'm going to bring a message on the four-letter words of God. Welcome to a new episode of Covenant Connection. You'll receive an anointed and refreshing message today from Pastors Dwayne and Carolyn Broom. tend to be the type of person, for those who've never heard me minister, it's been a little while, that I like to be practical and down to earth and kind of like kick your shoes off and, you know, kind of ministry that you can apply in your every day to day life. That's what, how Dwayne ministers too, but I, you know, that's just my heartbeat. And so as I was studying, you have to bear with me with this title of the message, or the cuss words of the Bible. You know, we would always joke about this, and I would always jot them down, and I knew, I was like, one day I'm going to bring a message on the four-letter words of God, you know, because we always think of four-letter words as being bad. And even in Christendom, there are some four-letter words that we know we interpret as being bad because we don't want to do them. So when we hear them, they tend to set up a negative kind of thing within us because we don't you know, like what's being said. So real quickly, I'm just going to give you my list <laughs> and see which ones we get through, and we'll just go from there. Amen? Okay. There are some four-letter words we do like. I'm going to try to save those to the end. Those are good four-letter words. But I want to deal with the ones that we as believers, everyone in this body, we have been saved long enough, and we have been taught and trained to where these things should not affect us negatively, but they still do. And I'll throw out one of the biggest ones that affects a lot of Christians. The word is fast. Normally when you hear fast, it's almost like the average Christian will go into convulsions. You know, <laughs> just the thought of abstaining from food. You know, and it was funny, yesterday, you know, my son has been working with my husband since he's been out of school. And yesterday, he, he has tr he's tried to start the diet we've been doing. It is the funniest thing. I mean, my son, and not eating the way he normally eats, you would think you're torturing him, right? So he made it through, I think, two whole days. He did good, oh, now it's three days. He's made it through three days. And so I called him yesterday. We were going to get food, right? And I called him to see what he wanted because he can only eat certain things, right? And so Dwayne says, well, tell him he can eat whatever he wants right now because next week he's fasting. It was like total silence <laughs> on the phone. And he was like, what? I was like, fasting. You know, you're working for your dad now. You got to do what your dad's telling you to do. He's like, I didn't know that was part of the job. <laughs> I said, oh, no, you're on call 24-7, and fasting is part of it. So your dad said you're going to fast, so you might as well eat what you want today. And he was like, all week? <laughs> but he, my husband was, I think, somewhat playing, but not really playing. <laughs> you know. But fast is one of those words that when you say fast to the average Christian, okay, it is the last thing they want to do. It is not a pleasant thought. It is not something you normally just wake up saying, you know what, I'm going to fast today. I mean, it really has to be God telling you, and you have to know it's God. And when you hear people talk about a three-day fast or a seven-day fast or a 21-day fast or a 40-day fast, Number one, when you start getting to anything beyond three days, you better make sure it's God, okay? Because if you do it in your flesh, you will starve yourself, and you could get sick. So you have to make sure when you fast, you are fasting for the proper reasons. You are not fasting to lose weight. That's called a diet. That's another four-letter word we don't like, but it's not in the Bible, <laughs> okay? But that's called a diet. So don't think, oh, I'm going to fast and you're doing something from, for God where really you were just trying to lose a few pounds. You know, you have to do it with the right motive. Fasting is a time you are supposed to separate yourself. It's a time of getting your body under control. So after you go through, now, 
I almost feel hypocritical up here talking about this because fasting, I'm one of those when it seemed like every time a fast was called, fortunately I was either pregnant or I was nursing and I couldn't do it, you know, but it's the type of thing we as believers need to live a fasted life, amen, but we don't always accomplish that. So I'm just letting you know it is okay if you have not been successful, but it is something you need to master when God is telling you to fast. Not because another person tells you to fast. You have to know it's God. Now, if a church mandates a fast, you need to be a part of that. But even in that, you need to see what's your part within this fast. Just because someone tells me I have to do a 40-day fast, I'm going to have to hear from a higher authority on that one. You know, because if you don't do it right, you can harm yourself. So you have to make sure it's right. I've heard of people, churches mandating a fast, and people were blending up everything in their blender from pork chops to whatever, because they were told it had to be liquid. So they liquefied everything. You know, when that is not the true intention of a fast, okay? I don't know how that works, but I have heard you can liquefy pork chops and stuff. Okay. Has anyone else heard that? I, I've heard that, you know. I know you don't want to admit to it, but just make sure if you're going to participate in a fast, you would do it the right way. And there are benefits to fasting. I mean, fasting is just not a way that mean God tries to get you to deprive yourself of something you enjoy. No, it heightens your spiritual experience. It heightens your sensitivity to hear from God, to be able, when you pray, God tells us there are certain things, like when he talked about demons, that only come out through fasting and prayer. So we tend to leave that fasting part out and wonder why our prayers aren't getting answered sometimes. So sometimes you might have to go to God and say, hey, is this something I need to be fasting about also? You know, prayer, we, you know, tend, well, that's another four-letter word, pray. I'll put those two together. A lot of people don't pray. They're believers. They love God. They'll be to church every Sunday, but they don't pray. And if you don't pray, you are living a defeated life. Because now you are subject to what is happening in circumstances around you. Prayer will overcome things. Prayer, you can defeat things. Prayer, you can take authority over things in the spirit. But what happens if you don't pray? You are left to whatever's going on. You have no authority if you're not praying. Don't deceive yourself. There'll be people, we used to laugh, you know, when you come from charismatic churches, you know, some things can really seem funny. But I know there was a time when everyone was going around applying the blood of Jesus. You should apply the blood of Jesus to your life, to your home. I mean, we have the authority to apply the blood of Jesus, but it almost seemed like the, it was like a spray thing. You know, you know what I'm saying? They were, it was like they were going around applying the blood of Jesus like Lysol, you know, and, and that does not work. You know, you have to understand the authority that's been given to you through the blood of Jesus. But just going around dabbing people isn't necessarily what's happening if you do not walk in that truth within you. But I mean, it was, you know, there was a phase, I guess everyone was going through it at one time. But there is power in the blood of Jesus. So I don't want to make it seem like that's not effective. It's just when people do it out of ritual, when people do it out of mimicking, not truly understanding what you are doing, because I apply the blood of Jesus over my children all the time, over our home, over ourselves, over our business, over the ministry. That's what you should do, but it's not a Lysol kind of ward off, you know, demons kind of thing. The authority is within you. Amen? So fast and pray. Two things, two cuss words that go together. Fast and pray. When he says, can you not tarry one hour? I'm not going to ask how many people in here pray an hour a day because I personally, it's been a while since I've been able to consistently pray a solid hour a day. Now I pray throughout my day where I pray far more than an hour, but it's a lifestyle of prayer. God knows your time. He knows your situation. Now some, there are those of you who are so blessed that you can get up at four in the morning. 
and five in the morning. I've just not mastered that gift yet, okay? But those who can, that is that precious time. If you can do that, do it. You know, the watch time, you know, when you feel like if you're up at four, you have a special hotline to God, you know, because you feel like not everyone else is pulling on him at the same time, you know. But everyone's life is different. So you can't judge each other on when they do pray, when they don't pray. The key is you must pray. If you are not praying, I can already tell you, you're defeated. And you tend to rely on other people to do the praying for you. So like we as pastors or any leader in a church, you always have people coming up, you know, I'm facing this, please pray with me. The people that I like are, you know, I'm dealing with this,